A Chicago skyline, five miles south of the one most people know. This is Robert Taylor Homes, the largest housing project in the world, the poorest urban community in the United States. Several different gangs that fall under two different nations. You have the Folks Nation and you have the People Nation. And the Folks Nation basically runs under the six. And uh, GDs, BDs, amongst others, will be folks. Now you have some BDs that run under the People Nation. Those are called Blue Fins, but I'll talk about them in another uh, video. But anyway, bogus folks. This is uh one of the BDs and uh man so I don't wanna say his name because I'm gonna talk about some things and it's pretty much gonna give it away but I respect for him and his family. Um it was actually two of them and again two big ass niggas. It was black as midnight. One of them had a ball head, the other one had a, a jerry curl actually. And he had it in the 90s. <laughs> that should give it away to a lot of BDs if they ever run across this video. They also, no matter how much money they had, they love to ride around this goddamn 18 van. I don't know why, but they did. But anyway, um, I'm going to speak on one in particular because he was the main one. Now, mind you, these are big ass niggas in uh, intimidating in stature, and uh, man. So what he was doing was, he is related to one of the founders of the Disciple Nation. One of the uh, guys that was there from the beginning. So, he got away with a lot of stuff. Now, we have structure, rules, and regulations. And when you break those rules and regulations, you get dealt with harshly. It's called a violation. And uh, this guy, I'll tell you some of the stuff they would do. Like, they pull up, right? Get out. And uh, say a brother was sitting there. This is back when herring bones was in style. And, you know, say a brother was sitting there with a big ass herring bone on or something. Just copy spent like three thousand dollars on it he would walk up and be like oh damn folks that's a nice ass bone hey let me see that folks you think i let me let me check that out let me see the weight on it and uh either the guy would take it off his neck because you know it was a fellow bd you know he's like, okay folks wasn't thinking nothing hand it to him he put it on he's like damn i look good in this folks what you think and he looked to the other one like, yeah, you look good in that. It's like, what y'all finna do, folks? Oh, shit, we just out here chilling, you know? All right, well, I'll catch y'all later. And walk off with folks' shit. <laughs> just like that. He was on some Debo shit for real, but he looked more like Big Worm from Friday. And he was notorious for doing shit like this. Uh, he had asked to use one of the folks' car. The folks would give it to him, nice ass whips, forums and shit. He'd jump in that motherfucker and pull off, and they'll never see their car again. And uh, you had to go through a chain of command to bring him up on charges for that. 
but he was getting a pass because, like I said, he was related to one of the founding members. So, you know, because normally he would get fucked up for doing shit like that to the folks. I seen this guy. No bullshit. One of the folks was in violation. He was bogus for something. And, uh, he can't, I almost said his name. <laughs> he came to give, you know, to let him know he was in violation. So he came with about, um, it was a bunch of guys. I, I can't remember how many. But they came to the guy's apartment, you know, well, his girl's apartment, on the low end over there on, uh, 40, what was that, 45th? So anyway... 45th or 43rd, I forgot where they stayed. It was 45th. So, anyway, they go in there, and he tell them, like, folks, you in, you in violation, woo-woo-woo. And uh, he told the guy to step in the back with, uh, it was about four dudes went back there with him to violate him. So, you know, while, now, this is no bullshit. While he back there getting violated, his wife, legal wife, he, the guy had actually married this woman. His wife was in the front room. Now that was bogus right there for them doing that in front of his wife. But his wife was in the front room. This guy, while the guy was back there getting violated, this guy was in the front room fucking his wife. No shit. The guy fucked his wife while he back there getting violated. Now, don't ask me was she, I don't know, was she willing or he took it, I don't know, but... It was all bogus. And if he took it, that was super bogus too. So rumbling started getting back to the head like, you know, you got to do something because this nigga's out of control. But the head guy, he was, you know, he was kind of lenient. He put him to the side and talked to him. And, uh, you know, so one in particular time, he sold some of the folks. See, he didn't do it to other, like, GDs and lords and stones and he didn't do it because he knew he would start a war so he was doing it to the folks his own folks so uh one time he sold 10 bricks of straight flour to the folks from the wild hunters the wild hunters is an area in chicago and that was like the last straw i mean all the shit he been doing getting away with when he sold that 10 bricks of flour that was the last straw. So the, the folks from the hunters came to the head dude and was like, look, either you do something or we gonna do something. And we do something, if anybody got a problem with it, it is what it is. Now, they had to be heated to say something like that to the head guy. Cause the head guy could have had them taken out. But the head guy was fed up. So, I remember how, remember what happened to him, like, uh, now, I'm not gonna say the other project we was in, but we was in, we wasn't in the room, we, had, we wasn't in the Robert Taylor, we was in another one of the projects that we ran, and this one was like our fortress, so, any BDs listening, y'all already figured it out, but this was the fortress, <laughs> so, it was a party going on, and uh, I was out on the porch and I looked down and I seen that 18 van pull up. So I knew he was there. I was like, oh, this, this nigga. You know? So, but um, so I go in the party. It's late. It's like 12, something like that. So I go in the party and um, I'm wondering because I know he's going to show up. And uh, he used to ask me to come out to uh, out of town to work for him, but you know, I I didn't want to fuck with him like that. But anyway, I'm in the party, and you know, those project parties, the, the apartments ain't all that big, and the music is loud, but we heard gunfire like crazy. We heard it over the loud music. So, I'm thinking to myself, like, when they turn the music off, and we heard what we heard, I'm thinking to myself, like, this can't be happening. Like, nobody would dare come in these projects. I mean, that was like a stronghold of ours. It was a fortress. So, everybody coming out to see what's going on, because 
where's this gunfire? The police didn't even come in there like that. So we come out, we look around, we don't see nothing. And we see the other one, his partner, like run towards the 18 van. So we're like, what, what the fuck they doing? So we go downstairs and see what they doing. When we get down there, man, this dude looked like Swiss motherfucking cheese. Damn near every... I might be exaggerating a little bit, but it seemed like every spot on his body had a bullet hole. And he was laid out. And when I seen it, I kind of knew what it was. We all kind of figured it out. Like, nah, this ain't, this wasn't somebody coming in, you know, doing this shit. This was, he got dealt with in the most severe way. And, uh, like, normally we, that wasn't, we didn't do stuff like that. But when you did shit he did, constantly violating, man, I mean, you, hey, you get what you get. And this guy, man, I can't even begin. I, you know how many cars he took from the folks? And so many of the folks wanted to, you know, kill his ass. But, man, it's like, um, like that in that Biggie Small song. In the commission, you asked for permission to hit him. So, niggas was, you know, they was going to the man like, look, what the fuck is you gonna do? And, uh, just because he was related to one of the founders, he got away with a lot of shit. But to that night, all that came back on him. It all came back on him in the worst way, man. Yeah, uh, I, <laughs> I didn't even go to the funeral because, man, he had a lot of good ways about him. No doubt. He would look out. And the guy wasn't broken. And he had crazy money. But some people with that personality, he had that personality like that, where he would take, he didn't give a fuck. And uh, he did kick off a couple wars doing that. So, you know, when the pressure came down on him, he just started doing the BDs. He knew he could get away with it. And like I said, when he did that shit with folks and his wife, that kind of set the stage. But then when he got the folks out there for the 10 bricks and the wild hunters, that was it. I mean, it was already bubbling and boiling. I don't know what happened with um, the guy's wife or whatever, but I know that was an issue. But, cause it, it was already bubbling and boiling from that. And then, right, right after that, he did that to the folks in the hunters. So after that, man, I, I kinda knew. He used to go out of town a lot. And uh, he, he'd do something bogus, real bogus, and then he'll leave town. And then when he came back, you know what I'm saying, somehow or another, he gets like leniency because of who he was. But that night, man, Joe, they let him have it, for real.